12.15 p.m., November 14, 1965. Men of Bravo Company, 1st Battalion, 7th Cavalry, are patrolling the jungle near a dry creek bed in the Ladrang Valley of South Vietnam. They know the enemy is near, as just a short time earlier, a North Vietnamese soldier was captured, revealing to the 17th Commander, Lt. Col. Hal Moore, that there were up to 1,600 enemy soldiers on nearby Chupong Mountain, all very much wanting to kill Americans. Shots rang out. First and second platoons of Bravo Company engaged the enemy, advancing abreast of one another. The bloody battle of Le Drang had begun, the first major encounter between Americans and North Vietnamese troops. Pursuing the North Vietnamese on its right flank, second platoon came under intense fire in a clearing in the jungle. They initially held off the enemy, inflicting heavy casualties while suffering none of their own. Then, however, the situation quickly disintegrated. The North Vietnamese attack persisted and intensified, and the men of 2nd Platoon soon began suffering serious losses, including their commander, Lieutenant Henry Herrick, who despite his mortal wounds, passed vital commands to his men and called in artillery support. Cut off from the rest of their forces, 2nd Platoon desperately held out from a defensive position, waiting for help to arrive. As the rest of the battalion fought to maintain a perimeter, men of Alpha Company under Captain Tony Nadal were ordered to relieve the isolated troops. Leading the assault was 2nd Platoon Alpha Company Commander Lieutenant Walter Joseph Marm, Jr. A native of Washington, Pennsylvania, Marm graduated college in 1964 with a business degree. He enlisted in the Army, graduated Officer Candidate School, and attended Ranger School. However, the Army needed junior officers for a new unit being formed, the 1st Cavalry Division, Airmobile, and he was reassigned to the division's 7th Cavalry, George Armstrong Custer's old unit, and by September 1965, he was in Vietnam. Marm's men came under intense fire from the well-disciplined North Vietnamese forces and were forced to take cover in the thick underbrush. Seeing four enemy soldiers attempting to outflank his unit, he moved toward them through a hail of bullets, killing all of them. Then, seeing his men pinned down by a well-concealed machine gun, he intentionally exposed himself to its fire to determine its position, which turned out to be behind a large anthill-shaped berm. Lieutenant Marm then took a bazooka aimed at the position and fired. Despite inflicting casualties on the enemy, his shot failed to knock out the gun. Marm then charged over open ground through the fire, hurling grenades into the enemy position, taking out eight of the enemy before eliminating the remainder with his M16 rifle. As he turned to motion his men to move forward to relieve their trapped comrades, he was shot through the jaw. Two of his men rushed forward to treat him. He was escorted to the command post at LZ X-Ray and medevaced out of the battle zone. The men of the Lost Platoon held out through the night of the 14th and were eventually rescued and evacuated the next day. And by the morning of November 16th, the reinforced Americans held the advantage, having inflicted thousands of casualties on the enemy, which was no longer capable of putting up a fight. Still, the battle at LZ X-Ray and the ensuing ambush of the Americans at LZ Albany proved that the North Vietnamese were an enemy to be taken seriously. Even more evident was that, in combat, the generation of American servicemen serving in Vietnam was as brave and noble as any that had come before or since. Lieutenant Marm and his comrades proved that to be true. Walter Joseph Marm was awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions at Le Drang. In 1969, he asked to return to Vietnam for a second tour of duty. He was allowed to return only after signing a waiver that putting himself back in harm's way was entirely his own choice. Marm retired from the Army a colonel, a member of the elite fraternity of men who have received America's highest military award. Those men are a testament to the American soldiers' courage under fire and nobility in all situations, both on and off the battlefields.